I will show to you how to calculate the lateral forces on the frame. Actually, this is uh, very uh, clear in this uh, handout, but I will just uh, give you a brief uh, explanation. So after you calculate the wind pressure from BS6399, which is, for example, this is 0 0.769, you shall use this one in calculating these lateral forces okay, acting on this frame. This frame is ABC. Check with this one, ABC, meaning it's here. Okay, and then what is this lateral force that will be acting is acting on this area for this joint on this floor, on this first floor, and then you can compute also here the second floor. And the next page is very clear how you are going to do that. So, for example, here you have seven kilonewton here, and you have fifteen kilonewton here. How do you compute seven kilonewton and fifteen here? At the first floor, you have fifteen. The computed the wind pressure, which is 0.769, you multiply by that area. That area is, uh, check uh, figure 3, it is the area act, acting on this joint. So it's half of this height here is 1.75, and then you have here 2, and then you have here the total half of 5, and half of 5 becomes 5 itself. So you can compute now the value of the lateral force acting on the first floor, which is 15. It's the same way that you can compute also on the second floor. Now, when you have this one, we are going to use the portal method to get the moments on the beam. Now, in the portal method, it is assumed that its midpoint has a point of inflection. In other words, the moment is zero. Now, we get this uh, section and the first floor. So, uh, using portal method, the exterior column has X. Interior has 2x and another exterior has x. You total the forces along horizontal, you have 7, x, 2x, and x, so you can compute x, which is 1.75. In other words, exterior is 1.75 and interior 3.5. Now, from here, from this, we can compute now what are the columns here. So, as you can see here, as you can see here, you have now, yeah, continue with the columns here at the first floor. Again, here, you have two horizontal forces, 7 and 15. So 7 and 15, and then is equal to x, 2x and x. We can compute x, 5.5 for uh, in exterior and 11 for interior. And from here, we can compute now the column moments. Column moments is just simple. This is 1.75 and the, the second floor that we have computed multiplied by this height, which is 1.75. All the same for moment F, E, and moment IH. This is very important for us to compute the beam moments. Now, the moments that you have computed earlier, this in, direc in this direction, because of this one going in this direction to C, C that is in clockwise, and in this one is in opposite direction, counterclockwise. At joint C, you have this direction is equal to the opposing direction. So you have the moment here, 3.06. In other words, that would just be the same with MCF. The same method that you're going to compute to use for a joint F. CF is just equal to, or FC is equal to CF. So it's already known. FE is already computed before. So FI you can compute using this uh, equation. Uh, clockwise direction is equal to the counterclockwise direction. Thus we have this moment FI. Also with joint I. And similar calculation with the next floor. See? So the moment that you have computed or the flexure for this beam CFI is 3.06 for beam CF and then 3.06 again for beam FI. So meaning this will be the design moment that you are going to compute for designing the beam considering the wind load. This is just for wind load. Okay? Meaning you have to compute also for dead load and then for live load. The same that you are going to do in the computation of the beam moments for BEH versus BEH, this is in the first floor. So you just have to consider the direction, okay? Just check with the direction here. It's always clockwise. This one is clockwise, and the beam is counterclockwise. So clockwise, clockwise is equal to counterclockwise. As you can see here, the direction. Check, just check the direction. It's equal to the opposing direction. Then we can compute here. But before, yeah, of course, you need to compute the moment BA, which is this one. This is just 5.5 multiplied by the distance, which is half of 4, which is 2. Okay? So the same calculation that you have to do for joint E and for joint 
edge. So with this, you can determine now the moments at the beam. Okay, and again, these are, or well, this is the moment due to wind load. Okay, if you have some question, you just have to reach me out in Moodle. That, uh, yeah, Moodle.com. Thank you.